Okay. All right. Um, this is good. These guys are good. All right. So we are still working through lecture set number five. Um, we're going to start discussing the two stage cluster sampling strategy today. Okay, so this, our starting point in lecture set five will be slide 27. Just as a quick recap, um, last class we continued to talk about single stage cluster sampling. So the idea here is simply that you have some region that you would like to collect information from. And rather than um, collect information from each individual element within that region, so say each of the different persons that belong to the region that you're working with or to the population that you are working with, you sample collections of elements. Okay, so the cluster itself is a collection of individual elements where each element within the cluster contributes a measurement. So we have seen cluster sampling in a variety or for a variety of purposes. Mainly we focused on computation or estimation of the population mean. We also talked about estimation of the population total, and we actually looked at two different ways that we could estimate the population total based off of a cluster sample. Then we talked about a special case of cluster sampling where the um, number of elements within each cluster are exactly the same. This created an ANOVA type situation. Well, rather by letting the number of elements in each cluster be the same, we were able to express our variances in an ANOVA um, style table. And we could use that ANOVA table to gain an estimate of the simple random sampling variance. And then we were actually able to compare the cluster sampling variance to the simple random sampling variance for some population parameter, for example, the mean. And then this of course allows us to measure the relative efficiency. And then through that, we are able to compare the two approaches. And again, the idea here is that when we utilize relative efficiency, we want the, um, the samples to be the same for each approach. So this gives us a way of validating that particular approach. We also talked about sample size calculation within the cluster sample. So we started off with an, uh, an illustration of this last class. We looked at sample size calculation from two different scenarios. Um, um, in this case, making use of the information that was given to us. So mainly whether we have an estimate for M or we do not, where again, M is the number of elements that are within the population and within the clusters that we are studying. And then we talked about proportion estimation within cluster sampling, very similar idea to proportion estimation within any of the approaches that we have seen so far, just with adaptations to the estimators, given the problem that we are working on. And we concluded last class with an illustration of how stratification and cluster sampling work together. So this is what we left off with on uh, Monday's class. And effectively what we're showing here is you can stratify your population into multiple regions. So for example, here we have two regions and then we can apply cluster sampling within each of the strata. And then effectively we just have weighted averages of the cluster sampling estimators. All right, so today we are going to start by talking about two-stage cluster sampling. So two-stage cluster sampling, as you might guess, is an extension of regular cluster sampling. So in regular cluster sampling, we first, we basically just split the, up the population into different collections of elements, and those collections are, are the clusters. Um, okay, so with the two-stage approach, Effectively, what we are doing is we are randomly selecting the clusters first. So it starts off like cluster sampling. And then we randomly select the units within each of the clusters. So we basically have a cluster sample and then we have what would be like a simple random sample within each of the clusters. So the two stage idea refers to the random selection of the collection of elements and then the elements within each of the clusters. Okay, so following from that. We have two steps again, select the number of clusters, randomly select the number of clusters or the clusters rather, and then randomly select the elements, with, elements within each of the clusters. Um, so two-stage cluster sampling as, it's, as I have written here is often used in large surveys that involve sampling you know, of housing units, for example. 
or in quality control applications. So for example, an inspector will collect a sample of cartons and then collect a sample of packages within each of the different cartons. Okay, so compared to SRS and stratification, um, the advantages of two-stage cluster sampling are the same as those that we discussed for regular cluster sampling. Okay, so for example, if we refer back to a bit earlier in the lecture set, we discussed how cluster sampling compared to stratification and simple random sampling can be advantageous because it reduces the cost of um, developing the sampling frame. So rather than needing a list of all the individual elements within the population, we just need a list of the clusters now. Um, and it can also reduce the cost associated with collecting information from those elements within the population. So these are the same per, uh, points as we highlighted earlier in the same lecture set. Okay, so um, building a two-stage cluster sample is pretty much going to act as you might expect if you're following the two approaches that we have discussed so far, that being cluster sampling and simple random sampling. So the first thing we have to do is obtain a sampling frame that lists the clusters that would be of interest to us in the population. And then the second thing that we have to do is just simple random sample from within each of those selected clusters. All right. Then we obtain a sampling frame for each of the, yeah, well, I already said that, right? <laughs> okay, so our definitions for cluster sampling are written on slide 30. Most of these will be the same as they were before. For example, we let capital N represent the number of clusters in the population, and we let little n represent the number of clusters that were selected to actually be studied in our sample. Okay. Capital MI is gonna be the number of elements within the first cluster or within cluster I rather. Little MI is gonna be the number of elements selected in the simple random sample from that cluster. So we're still letting capital N designate number of clusters and M represent number of population elements. So this is consistent with the cluster sampling definitions. Therefore, capital M is going to be the total number of elements. Capital M bar is the average cluster size across the population. Little m bar is the estimate of that average cluster size. So this would be, for example, the average cluster size of the selected clusters. Yij is the jth observation from the cluster I, and mu tilde is the sample mean for each of the different clusters. So all of these definitions are consistent with what we had discussed for the original cluster sampling approach. All right, so if we are taking a two-stage cluster sampling approach, our goals are gonna be the same as they have been for the other um, sampling approaches that we have discussed so far. So for example, if we wanted to estimate the population mean, we can use what I've called mu tilde subscript DCS, like double cluster sample. I guess I could have used mu tilde TCS. Um, and this is gonna be one over capital M bar multiplied by the sum from I equals one to the number of clusters of the cluster size times the estimate from the cluster divided by little n. And then we have our variance term for the estimator, which you can see is quite a bit more complicated. It's um, a, It has two different components to it. So you can see that the leading component here, this is sort of like the cluster variance. So we can kind of think of this as variance for clusters. And then you can see that we have the second component here, which includes a summation. And this would be the variance for each cluster. Okay. So effectively, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that our variance for the estimator of the mean in the two-stage cluster sample is represented by two components, one component representing each stage of the clustering procedure. 
So you can see that the first component, this is again the variance for let's say stage one, which is where we select the clusters. And then we have a second component, which would be sort of the variance for stage two, where we select each of the individual elements within each of the clusters. Each of these estimates are given below. So you can see looking more carefully at sigma squared um, I, so the second estimate here, that this is, as you would expect, the sample estimator from the variance within each cluster. So here we have yij minus the mu hat i squared over mi minus one. So this is the traditional estimator of the variance for a simple random sample. This is simply the square difference of each observation about that cluster's mean divided by the number of elements minus one. So this is the traditional variance estimator that we are accustomed to seeing across the majority of our applications. The first term, which is our sigma squared B, so the sigma squared, I guess, between in some sense. Here we have the sum of the squared difference of the mi times mu hat minus the m bar times mu hat ds. So this is representing um, with a bit of weighting going on due to the mi and the capital M bar. This is effectively a representation of the variance or the square difference between each cluster mean and the overall mean from those clusters. Okay. So this is squared difference between each cluster, whereas this here is um, traditional variance for a SRS. Okay. So we have these two different components that make up our computation. Okay, if we wanted to extend this to be an estimator for the total, that's done in the usual way. So for example, if we need to get an estimate for TCS based off of mu hat DCS, we just multiply by the total number of elements within the population. And if we want to get an estimator for the variance, then we multiply our variance of the mean by m squared. Okay, so let's look at an example. So we have a nurseryman divides a large field into 50 plots and uses a two-stage cluster sample to collect the following information. Okay, so looking at this, um, illustration, you can see that we have a number of different, or we have effectively six different measurements or um, pieces of information contributing to our problem. Now the goals here are to estimate the average height of the seedlings in the field if there are 2,600 seedlings in total, place a bound on that error of estimation, and then estimate tau and place a bound on this. So we're doing, we're directly applying the formula that we have seen on the previous slides. Okay, so let's break down what we have just so that we have an idea of what the two-stage approach is giving us. Okay, so first we have our plot here, right? So the plots are the clusters. So we have little n is equal to 10 clusters that have been selected. In the original description of the problem, we are told that there are 50 plots. So this means that we had capital N equals 50 plots to choose from. So effectively what we have done on stage one is we have selected 10 plots from the 50 that were available to us. In each plot, we have a number of seedlings and then the number of seedlings that were sampled. So this represents the, to the first column seedlings represent the total number of elements that are available to us in the cluster. So each of these are the capital MI. Okay, so we have, for example, M1, which is 52. We have M2, which is 56, M3, which is 60, et cetera. So this is the number of elements within each of the different clusters. Here we have the number of elements sampled. So this is gonna be the little mi, okay? So for example, we sampled five from 52 observations, six from 56 observations, six from 60 observations, et cetera. In the fourth column, we have the actual measurements. So each of these values here represent a yij 
for each of the selected clusters or each of the selected plots, right? So the 12, for example, this value here is going to be Y11, which is the element in the first cluster, first element in the first cluster. Whereas the 13 here, this would be Y15, which is the fifth element in the first cluster. And then we would have a similar notation working our way down. For example, here we would have Y106, which would be the sixth element in the 10th cluster. All right, we're given the mean for each of the elements. So these are gonna be the mu hat i. So this is the average of the sampled values in each of the clusters. J. And then we have our standard DV or our variance for each cluster. So you can see that the amount of work that goes into actually building the initial or designing the setup is quite significant. So we have a lot of information that we need to digest in order to work through with the problem. Okay. In part A, we are asked to estimate the average height for um, the field if there are 2,600 seedlings in total. So the 2,600 here represents the total number of seedlings across all 50 plots. So this is going to be capital M. So in part A, we are going to have capital M equals 2,600, capital N is equal to 50, okay? Our estimator for the mean is given by mu hat DCS is equal to one over M bar multiplied by the sum across each of the clusters of the M I. So the number of elements in each cluster multiplied by mu hat all over N. Uh, I guess I could just write this. I mean, my sum too big. All right. Okay, so we're gonna have in this case, one divided by, and then we'll have 2,600 over 50 multiplied by, and now what we're gonna do is take the sum of the number of elements in each cluster multiplied by the mean for all 10 clusters. Okay, so starting with the first one, this is gonna be um, 52, I believe it was, multiplied by 11.6. And then working down to the 10th cluster, we would have 45 multiplied by 12. So we're, this is for each of the clusters in the sample. Um, and then we're dividing by N, which is the number of clusters, which is equal to 10. Okay, and this should give us All right, in part B, we wanna estimate the variance um, within each of the clusters or the variance of our mean estimator. So we are told that sigma hat squared little b is equal to 1,567, uh, 15,676, sorry, 0.94. And sigma and the sum from i equals one to n of the mi squared one minus mi over capital mi of the sigma hat i squared over mi is equal to 4,713.198. 
Okay, so our variance estimator here for mu tilde DCS is equal to one minus little n over capital N. Um, just a note in this case that this is gonna be one minus 10 over 50, which is certainly gonna be less than 0 0.95. So we can keep that. And then we will have sigma hat squared B divided by little n over M bar squared plus one over one, sorry, one over one, one over N times capital N times M bar squared. Make sure I have that correct. Multiplied by the sum from I equals one to N of the M I squared one minus little M I over capital M I multiplied by sigma hat I squared over M I. All right, so just taking a quick look at the data here, you can see that we have for the MI or the one minus MI over capital MI, we have five over 52, six over 56, six over 60, five over 46, five over 49, five over 51, five over 50, six over 61, six over 60 again, and six over 45. So all of those should be fine. I don't think any of those are gonna exceed any of those ratios of number sample to total number of seedlings, so the MI to capital MI are gonna be greater than, or less than 0 0.5, which would mean that they're greater than 0 0.95. So we can maintain that this also passes. So assume each uh, FPC is needed, but we can easily verify that as well. But just from a visual inspection, it looks like all of those should be okay. Um, all right, so now all we have left to do is to, Chow, take a lap, walk around. So all we have left to do now is plug in to the equation. Keep going. Should work. The lights, power failure. Come on, sensors. Nothing. It's weird. Oh, there you go. Good work, Chow. Thank you. All right. So plugging in, we're going to have 1 over 10 divided by 50 multiplied by the 15,676.94 divided by 10 over 2600 divided by 50 squared plus 1 over 10 times 50 times the 2600 over 50 squared. Multiplied by 4713.199. Okay, so this should give us if the math works out correctly, 0 0.4673, which means that our bound is gonna be equal to 1.96 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.4673, which is equal to 1.3398. Yeah, yeah, so the it's the same um, expression, Miriam, that's given right here. One minus little mi over capital mi. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do here is just estimate the population total. 
So this is going to be quite easy given what we have below. So the, the estimate for the total is gonna to be M multiplied by the estimate for the average. So that's 2,600 multiplied by 9.559, which is equal to um, 24,000 854.17. And then we also want to get an estimate for the variance of the total. So following the same logic from below, we have variance of tau tilde DCS is equal to M squared multiplied by the variance of mu tilde DCS. So that's gonna be 2,600 squared multiplied by 0 0.467300, which is equal to 3,158,953. It's okay. Play with your phone. <clears throat> Any questions? No. Pretty straightforward. Any questions in the virtual world? In the world beyond. seeing none. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is an adaptation to the estimators in the two-stage cluster sampling approach. So when we first introduced cluster sampling, we mentioned that the original estimators depended on the value of m, and in some cases we don't know the true number of elements that could be collected from the entire population. If this is the case, then we need to adapt our estimation, our estimators in order to account for this or not depend on this value. So in the two-stage cluster sampling approach, we can make this adaptation as shown on slide 16. So equate or shown on slide 34 in equation 16, sorry. All right, so what we have here is the estimator or the ratio estimator for the two-stage cluster sampling approach that does no longer depend on capital M, but does require that we know the number of elements within each of the clustered samples. This in a two stage approach though, is not an unrealistic um, assumption because again, with two stage cluster sampling, what we are doing is, a sec is essentially collecting an SRS within each of the clusters. So we should know capital MI in order to actually make these computations or in order to actually simple random sample within the selected cluster. Okay, so our ratio estimator for the two-stage cluster sampling approach is given in 16. You can see what this is. It's basically just a weighted estimate of the averages. So we have capital MI multiplied by the mean from each cluster divided by the sum of the elements that we are uh, available to us across all of the clusters. Again, we have our variance term shown below. You can see that the variance for the second term is effectively identical to the variance for the first term. Um, so we have one over n minus one over little n minus capital N. Sorry, we have the FPC for the number of clusters <laughs> multiplied by sigma squared R, which is basically just the sum of the squared differences across uh, between each of the clusters, plus one minus little n over capital N m bar squared multiplied by the sum of the mi squared times an FPC within each cluster, multiplied by sigma squared i over mi, where sigma squared i again is just the variance or is an estimator of the variance within each of the clusters. So there's not much of a difference here. Notably, we still have capital M bars in each of those expressions. However, if M is unknown, we can just estimate these using little m. Okay. 
So we're basically just replacing capital M bar with an estimate based off of what we have actually observed. Okay, so we're going to illustrate these two approaches um, using the same information or the nurseryman example that we studied in example one for two stage cluster sampling. So these estimates here are going to be based off the same set of data that we studied in the first example. Okay, so referring back to the original nurseryman example, we now have mu hat r is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of the m i squared multiplied by mu hat i divided by the sum from i equals one to little n of the m i. Okay. So this is going to be again, like it was before. So starting from the first cluster, we'll have 52 multiplied by 11.6, all the way down to the last cluster, which would be 45 multiplied by 12. And then in the denominator, we just have the sum of the number of elements available within each cluster. So that would be the 52 down to the 45 from that table that we used in example one. And this is going to give us 9.379, right? And then if we compare to the original estimate, you can see that these are actually pretty close to each other. So we have 9.379 based off the ratio estimator approach, and we had 9.559 based off of the um, a traditional two-stage cluster sampling approach. All right. Okay, so our variance estimator, this will also be pretty similar to what we had before. And so we're gonna have one minus little n over capital N multiplied by sigma hat r squared divided by n times m bar squared plus one minus or one over each time n time little n times capital M times m bar squared multiplied by the sum from i equals one to n of the m i squared one minus little m i over capital m i times the sigma hat i squared over little m i. Okay, so we are gonna use, um, we don't have capital M here. So that's the assumption that we are making. Okay, so we're going to estimate m bar using little m bar. So in our formula, we will have one minus 10 over 50 multiplied by 18,454 plus 0.68 divided by 10 multiplied by, and now we're gonna have the sum from or the sum across the 10 clusters of the population totals, right? So this is gonna be the same as the denominator for the estimator for the mean. So this is going to be basically the 52 down to the 45, summed together, divided by 10, all squared. Okay. And then we're going to add on to that the 1 over 10 multiplied by 50. And then we'll have the same term here. So this will be the 52 down to the 45 over 10 all squared. And then we're going to multiply by the, sum that, uh, the same summation that we had above. Note that this is the exact same value from the first example. So this will be the 4,713.199. Okay. 
So this should work out to be 0 0.528943. And then we'll have the bound is equal to 1.96 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.528943, which is equal to 1.425. All right. Okay, any questions? Can everyone read what I have here? So just again, for clarification, the sum of the MI is being used in three different places, right? So we have it in the, new, in the denominator for the mean, and we have it in the denominators for the variance term in both expressions. All right, let's talk about um, one more estimation procedure within the two-stage approach, which is for the proportion. So you can see all we're really doing here today is just going through an illustration of how we would perform each of the different estimate or how we would estimate each of the three population parameters that we're typically interested in from a two-stage approach. Following that, we're going to talk about the situation where cluster sizes are equal and effectively the ANOVA style calculations we can get from the two-stage approach. So this is very much analogous to what we did in the single cluster sampling approach. After that, we'll be done with um, this particular, particular unit. And then we're gonna start to talk about some other like sort of special topics within um, sampling. So the last illustration that we'll probably have time for today will just be an example of how we estimate the population proportion within a two-stage cluster sample. So you can see in equation 17 and actually in the variance expression that follows that these formulas are identical to what we had when we considered the ratio estimator for the population mean um, from a two-stage cluster sampling approach. The only difference here is that we have a pi tilde i within equation 17. So this is the estimate of the population proportion from each cluster. And in our variance expression, we have pi i times one minus pi i here, which basically just represents the um, variance for the, uh, or the variance of each of the individual clusters with relation to the proportion. The thing I'm wondering is, over MI. I'm just going to verify one thing um, after class, but I'll work through the example as it is. I just think it's strange that there that this isn't um, all over m i, because usually like this entire expression is the estimator of the variance, and then we would divide by m i. So I'm just going to check that after class. It's probably the case that the formula is fine as it's written, but I just want to make sure. But nonetheless, we'll work through the example as it's given, and then if there has to be an adaptation, I'll just note that on Friday. Okay, so this is pretty much the exact same setup that we saw before. So in this particular setup, we have four different cities. So each city here is going to be the is going to be a cluster. Okay, we have the number of stores from each city. So this is going to be our capital MI. 
number of sampled stores, and then we have number of stores not meeting a criteria. Okay, so this is going to be the YIJ for each of the clusters. Actually, this would just be the YI, sorry, for each cluster. So it's the count of the number of stores not meeting the criteria. Okay, so we wanna estimate the proportion of stores not meeting each criteria, and then we wanna bound this estimate. All right, so first we have to make a couple of little uh, notes here. So the second note is really only gonna be used in part B, but you'll notice here that we don't actually know the true number of cities. Okay, so we're gonna assume N is very large. Therefore, we can ignore the FPC. And there will be one other consequence of this, which would probably be that the second term is not needed. But we'll come back to that momentarily. Um, all right, now the other thing we have to do is just show how the proportion estimate is going to be computed. Okay, so we have pi, this is a pi, hat dcs is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of the mi multiplied by <laughs> pi hat i multiplied by the sum from i equals one to n of the mi. Okay, so the pi hat i, each pi hat i is going to be the proportion of stores that did not meet the criteria within each city. Okay, so if we were to form a third column here called pi hat i, this is going to be 3 over 13, 1 over 5, 4 over 9, and 2 over 8. So in our estimator, we would have, for example, 25 multiplied by three over 13, plus working our way down to the last cluster, 16 multiplied by two over eight, divided by, and I can write this one out in full because I'll have the space, the sum across each of the different cities. Right, and then that should give us an estimate of 0 0.287. Okay, so we are estimating here that approximately 28.7% of the cities did not meet the criteria. Okay, now what we wanna do is bound this estimator. So we have the variance of pi tilde DCS is equal to, um, one minus little n over capital N times sigma squared r over little n times m bar squared plus one minus little n capital M n m bar squared multiplied by the sum from i equals one to n of the m i squared one minus little m i over capital M i times the pi i hat one minus pi i hat over m i minus one. All right, so we are assuming that n is really large. So that means that this expression will go to one because we're gonna ignore the FPC. So we're effectively just multiplying by one. So we can say that it goes to one or you can just say like ignore this. Now the other consequence is if n is really large, right, then this whole expression here, actually, to be fair, no, this still makes sense. It'll go to one because it's one minus. So if n is really large, then what's going to happen is this entire second expression is actually going to go to zero, right? So if we divide by something that's massive, the entire expression here is going to be negligible. So since n is large, assume this 
term goes to zero. So basically what we're saying is that this term here is going to go to zero. So we get a dramatic simplification to sigma hat r squared divided by little n times capital M squared. All right. Okay, so sigma hat r squared is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of the mi multiplied by the pi hat i minus the mi multiplied by pi. Actually, I guess we can do it this way. I mean, they're, they're equivalent, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Multiplied by the pi hat. Uh, this would be pi hat DCS. and then divided by little n minus one. Okay, so this is going to be, for example, um, 25 multiplied by three over 13 minus 25 multiplied by 0 0.287 squared plus all the way down to the last term Never give myself enough room for this. So the last term would be the 16 multiplied by two over eight. Sorry, I'm just gonna move this over. Sixteen multiplied by two over eight minus sixteen multiplied by zero point two eight seven all squared divided by three. And this is going to be 3.704488. Okay, so then we have 3.704388 divided by four multiplied by and now we have to estimate the average. So we're gonna have 25 plus 10 plus 18 plus 16 over four squared. And that should give us something in the area of 0 0.003113. And then our bound is gonna be 1.96 multiplied by 0 0.003113 which is equal to 0 0.1094. I guess I could have just stopped at that. Right, sorry, that's a little bit messy. I'll clean this up a bit after, just to try and make it a little bit more squared up. Okay, um, but it's good. So now we have seen estimation of the three main um, parameters within a two-stage approach. We've talked about an adaptation to the mean estimator and the total estimator when capital M is unknown. The last thing that we have to do from the two-stage cluster sampling is look at the situation where the sample or where the size of each cluster is equivalent. And then we can use that to basically construct the ANOVA style calculation so that we can approximate the, SR, the SRS variance and then make a comparison across those two procedures. Following that, we'll start to talk about some special topics within cluster sampling. So this is the end of the different approaches. And now what we're gonna basically start to look at is what happens when we weight the observations unequally across either an SRS approach or say, for example, a cluster sampling approach. All right, so as always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And otherwise I will talk to you on Friday morning.